All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Razor Blade 15. Uh, this is model RZ09-0409. It's written like in this tiny area here. All right, anyways, we're going to be using, it looks like a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver to get the screws out. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. You want to remove all the screws from the bottom. Keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got four there, we got one on either side, and then four more down here. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on them as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. So yeah, let's go ahead and continue getting all these screws out. All right, some of these screws are held in pretty strong. They do put some thread locker in there. So you do want to take your time, go slow. Don't just try and like pull them out real fast because you don't want to strip the screws. If your screwdriver isn't getting a good grip, make sure to get a good screwdriver and don't continue with your current screwdriver. All right. I've seen too many people strip screws out on their computers trying to use the wrong size screwdriver bit. So make sure that you have the right screwdriver to do this, okay? And if there's like other razor blade laptops, then the bottom cover should come off relatively easily once we get all these screws out. Okay, there we go. Let's see if we can just grab this rubber piece and pull it up. And you can see it actually is coming up. There is something stuck in the middle here. But uh, I'm going to get underneath with my fingernails and then we'll just pull up. Um, it looks like it's stuck there. So is there? there's no hidden screw. Um, so let's go ahead and go around the side then. Go around the front here and then we'll lift from this side. And hopefully, okay, we did have to wiggle it a little, but there we go. And you can actually see there's a little metal kind of clip thing that clips in there. So you don't want to just rip that up. All right, so the customer's computer is having issues booting, and hopefully it's just a bad SSD. And oh no, what is this design? Huh. Oh, I see. Interesting. So this has a dual like SSD design here. Hopefully, I don't need to pull out any of the heat sinks or anything. There's this uh, GPU here underneath and the CPU here underneath. They're all soldered to the motherboard. So yeah, no, you're not going to be able to um, upgrade the CPU and GPU because they are soldered to the motherboard. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to get a thumbnail there. Give me a second. Okay. All right, let's go ahead now and take this out. So let's show the battery first. Usually you don't need to remove the battery, but let's go ahead and just disconnect it just so you can kind of see how it disconnects. So it has one of these little click in place battery connectors. So you just get underneath the tab and I just use my fingernail. You can use a plastic pry tool and you just pull it straight up just like that. And there we go. So the battery is disconnected now. Um, the battery does have little stickers on it that prevent you from kind of just taking it out. There's a screw sticker there. Um, let's see here. Can we see razor blade? Is there a model number for this battery anywhere here? Rechargeable. So the model number of the battery is right there. RC30-0248. All right. There's two sticks of RAM. We're going to pull one out just so you can kind of see. Pull the two tabs away from it. It pops up and then you can slide it out. Um, and this is a DDR4. 16 gig 3200 all right so you should be fine with any um ddr4 3200 speed ram in some cases you can put different speeds and it might work still as well but i usually just use the same speed to make it so we don't have to worry about that um, the customer isn't upgrading ram it's having issues booting and that's most likely a dead um sorry a dead ssd i'm cleaning it out because there's like a bunch of like stuff in there. Oops, I didn't realize I was so zoomed in. So I'm going to clean the fans out because they are pretty dusty here. All right, so we're just going to clean that out. All right, and I'm probably going to have to go take this outside and use my electric air blower to dust it a bit better. So let me do that and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So we cleaned out the fans. All right. Um, 
what else? There's the wireless card here. Um, they also put a sticker there, so if you remove it, you're going to be breaking that seal. So, yeah, all this stuff has things blocking it. There's one speaker here. The speaker connector's there. Um, it looks like you probably have to take the motherboard out to even remove that. So, kind of sucks. Everything is on top of each other. Um, this looks like the fan connector underneath the wireless antennas here. Um, and then you got the LCD LVDS, LVDS connectors over here. Uh, most likely, once you remove those screws, it'll pop up. You might have to remove the whole heatsink to get that out. So this design's very, very annoying. There's another fan here. So I guess I can't really show too much. Um, there's a CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. And this is an ML1220. I've never seen that model battery before. Uh, but yeah, it says it's rechargeable. Anyways, uh, how does this pop out? It looks like the way you pop this out, you have to bend this metal tab back to pull it away from the battery, and then you can probably pop it out. Um, I don't want to mess with that because the only thing they had an issue with is booting, and it's basically an SSD issue. So what we're going to do, we're going to switch on over to a tiny flathead screwdriver and see if I can peel up that sticker, this tamper sticker. Um, but if not, we're basically going to have to just destroy that sticker to be able to change it. So this says power off before operation. Um, I don't know why it says that, but okay. Let's see if we can peel this sticker. It's moving the whole sticker. Okay. Looks like we can get underneath it a little bit. So let's see. Oh, I might have already messed up the sticker. Okay. So we're just trying to peel this sticker out here carefully. All right, there we go. So we can set this sticker aside. All right, we got a screw there, most likely JAS1. Let's go ahead and undo that screw. Um, there's a whole bunch more screws here. I don't know why it has so many, but I guess that we're going to have to remove all of them. Are we? No? Okay, just these two. Okay, so that one and this one. Okay, so this screw is so you can attach the other SSD, which I kind of feel is a bad idea because that means you got two SSDs sandwiched on each other, um, and they're both putting heat into each other. So here's the SSD, all right, and let's go ahead and separate it. It does have a thermal pad that's making it stuck there. So there we go. There's a very thin, small thermal pad. Here's the SSD. Pretty sure this is a PCIe NVMe. Uh... I don't know if it says it anywhere, um, but it's a one terabyte um, SSD. Since it only has one notch, it's very likely a M.2 PCIe NVMe. All right, so I'm gonna put a new SSD in there. Let me grab one and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Here we are, we got a one terabyte. This is a crucial P3 SSD. We're gonna go ahead and put this in at an angle like this. Okay, push that in all the way. Make sure it passes this round portion so the screw can go in properly and then we're just going to put this back on top line it up and screw it into place okay i don't know why but i always see these um, third party ones with these heat sinks failing so i don't know if it's the ssds just suck or if the uh, thermal pad is doing something to cause it to fail because again it's always the ones with the thermal pads Oh, the SSD was being weird. Let's see if it went in all the way properly. It's probably going to pull itself up. Oh, okay, nope. The thermal pad didn't pull it up this time. So yeah, make sure it goes down all the way. And it looks like this screw kind of helped it go in. Like that, and then this screw. Alright, get that in. Alright, and that's pretty much all there is to it. We're going to go ahead and put this little sticker back on top. Not that it does anything, but we'll just put that on top. Technically, um, I don't think in California that these stickers are even like legal, like legally binding. So if you do open it, you shouldn't be in trouble or anything. It shouldn't void any warranties unless they can prove that you doing that is what destroyed the computer. So yeah, all right. Anyways, there we go. Let's go ahead and zoom out here, and then we will just put the bottom cover back on and reinstall Windows. So, yeah. All right. So we'll line this guy back up. 
we'll switch back over to the T5, our Torx 5 screwdriver. Alright, this thing has a lot of thermal pads in it. Alright, there's one here, one here, there's one here, and I believe these are also thermal pads, these gray ones. Alright, anyways, let's get this thing back on. Just line it up. Oh, don't forget, you do have to slide this side in first to lock it. You can see if you slide it, now you can't lift that up. All right, then we'll lower that down, and then we'll just get all these screws back in. Uh, to install Windows, I have a Windows uh, 10 and Windows 11 USB um, that I can decide depending what, what they want to install. I think this computer probably came with Windows 10. I don't know. I don't like Windows 11. I've seen too much stuff have problems with Windows 11. So I'm going to try Windows 10 install, and hopefully it has all the drivers, and we'll go from there. But... If I remember correctly, you plug in the USB when you power on the computer, you do press uh, F12. Oh, my bad. I almost forgot. We do have to reconnect the battery, obviously. Duh. Okay. So let's lift this back up. You can start from here, then work your way down to the front, and then lift this way. Okay. Come on. Let go. There we go. Yeah, don't forget to reconnect the battery. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use this properly. So pull that into the right place. Click that in. Good. All right. Sorry about that. I almost forgot that portion. Okay. Let's get this back in again at an angle. Get that in. Make sure it's locked in. Okay. There we go. Let's go ahead now and again get all the screws back in. You're welcome to fast forward if you want. I like to keep everything in so that way the customers can see how much time it took and not just fast forward everything, make it look all quick. Uh, but, anyways, if this video helped you out, please make sure to like comment subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well or so they can see my reviews and other videos um, and then if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living all right and if you can't help out that way again it does help a lot if you can watch a few of my other videos and then uh, comment on those and like them as well uh, because that's what the algorithm likes to see uh, even if it's like negative comments, YouTube likes to see that more than you just watch a little bit and then leave. All right. So anyways, let's get all these screws in and we should be good to go. We're going to boot the USB real quick and install or start the install process. Okay. Let the screw in. Last two. Last one here, and we should be good to go. There we go. Let's go ahead and flip this over. All right, I believe it was F12 on boot, but you do need to put the USB device in before you even do that. So let's plug in this USB, open it up, power button. I might have to plug it in. Oh, the keyboard's on, good. All right, and then we'll press F12 on boot. And here you can see, we can see the boot options. Press enter there. Windows 10 64 bit. And we'll just go through the normal install. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you on the next one. Let's drop this.